So far, what did we learn? We learned what is a system of linear equation and how can we solve it using Gaussian elimination method. And around that, we touched upon several things. Today, I just want to briefly start with geometrical interpretation of system of linear equations and continue afterwards. So we will touch upon many things today. So it is a, I believe it's a very important lecture that we are going to have today. So let's say you have two equations. So as we explained before, if you want to plot these things, say when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 3 over 2. So this is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, minus 1. So it passes from here. And when y is equal to 0, it is x is equal to 3. So it is this. So this equation geometrically means this line, right? The other equation, so these x's and y's, x and y on every point, every x and y, okay? Every x and y on this satisfies the first equation. So how many x and y satisfies this? Infinitely many, right? So when we look at the second one, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 6 over 5. So it's just like somewhere here, equal to 3. This is 4x plus 5y equal to 6. So which? Come on. So all x's and y's on this line satisfy the second equation, and all x and y satisfy first equation. So which x and y satisfy both of them? It is this, OK? So it's minus 1. So where two lines intersect is the solution of system of linear equation. The only point that will satisfy both of them, right? This, we already talked about this. Now let's talk about a simpler system, 2x minus y equal to 1, x plus y equal to 5. Again, when we look at this here, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 1, And when y is equal to 0, x is equal to 1 half. So it is 1, 1 half. Say so minus 1, 1, 2, this is minus 1 half. OK? So when x, when x is equal to y is minus 1, and this. So it is this line. OK? And when x is equal to 0, y is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And when y is equal to 0, x is 5. 5. x and y. Now, this is row interpretation of system of linear equation, meaning Every row is an equation, OK? Uh, is an equation. And when you consider this, 2 minus 1, 1, 1, x, y, 1, 5. This means this row is an equation, OK? And that is this one. And the other one is an equation. That is that one. And row wise, where they intersect is the solution. Now we will look at. Another interpretation, this is where matrix theory comes into picture. So this is looking at equations one by one and see where they intersect. Now let's look at 
column interpretation. So in this case, we just look at each as a vector, each column as a vector, and look at this as this is like x times 2, 1 vector plus y times minus 1, 1 vector is equal to 1 and 5. Okay? So when we look at that in that way, what does it mean? I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it's important that we understand this. So we have two vectors, right? So you have seen this in physics course in high school. So this is x and y. And you have, so this vector is what? 1, 2, right? And 1. So if you have this vector here. OK? And then you have another vector called minus 1, 1. OK? So let's call this alpha and beta. <laughs> anyway, that's OK. The other one is minus 1, 1. x is minus 1, and 1, this is 1. OK? So this vector. What we are saying is that which linear combination of these two vectors? When you add these, how do you add two vectors? Do you remember that? You take this vector and put it here, right? It's like adding x's and y's. That's what it gives you. OK, so you want to find a multiple of this and a multiple of this, or a negative multiple of that, right? Add them so that the right-hand side, you will achieve this. What is that? 1 and 5. 1 and 5. OK? So you want to find, this row, column interpretation is that you want to find appropriate multiples of this x's, x and y, this, these two vectors, so that they will add up to the right-hand side vector. Okay? So which, which vector, if I were to give you, for example, a vector here, do you think by taking a, just multiples of these two vectors and adding them up, you could obtain this. As a matter of fact, if I were to give you these two vectors, one of them is this and the other one is this, can you obtain any vector, any point, right? What do we call it? We call it basis, right? So this means linear combination of these two vectors, we will call them linearly independent in a two-dimensional space. Linearly independent two vectors will span the entire two-dimensional space. We will talk about this at the end of lecture today in details. So this is like looking at it. These are vectors. Are they linearly independent or linearly dependent? Okay. If they are linearly independent, you can obtain any right-hand side by taking appropriate multiples of these. That means. This has a solution, right? This is a, this is a bit more abstract way of looking at solution of system of linear equations. But this is what matrix theory brings into the picture. Otherwise, if we didn't talk about matrices, we could still talk about solution of this, right? As we did in the first week, we could just for, solve for y from here in terms of x, substitute here, and solve for x, then go up to the second one and solve for y. But then you would miss this interpretation of looking at the columns as vectors and looking at the solution right hand side as the linear combination of the these column spaces okay i thought that i should stress that a little bit more and now Let's talk about matrix algebra formally a little bit. So matrices are arrays that we show them with capital letters in general. You would A11, A12. Now they will warn me that I should write larger, okay? 
A I J A N one A N two A N N. Okay. These are called matrices and the components A I J means first one is the row. This means it is in the i row, and the second one is column. This means it is in the j column. Okay. So this is in general what we call a matrix. How do you add two matrices? Let's say you have A and you have B. Both of them are n by m. What does this mean? This matrix has n rows and m columns. And this has the same thing. Otherwise, you couldn't add them. So a plus or minus b means you would have here a i j plus or minus b i j. So you would add the appropriate components. Let's do an example. So you have 2, 3, minus 1, 5. We call this A plus minus 3, 1, 2, 5. You call this B. You add them together. So you just add this to that, right? So it is minus 1, 4, 1, and 10. If you subtract, again, Similarly, you would subtract them. OK, when you want to multiply, let's say C is equal to some alpha times A. So what you would have is that Cij just would be alpha times Aij, meaning you would multiply every component of the matrix A. That's what multiplying a matrix with a scalar, right? This is a scalar, it's not a matrix, right? This is a matrix. So this is how you multiply a matrix with a scalar. How do we multiply two matrices? This is called matrix algebra, right? Now we started talking about formally how do we manipulate matrices. Using all these basic operations, we will do sophisticated things afterwards. So we are now formally setting up our language, how we manipulate matrices. So if you have given A, then this, they call it a i j, this is n by m. And let's say you have b, this is b i j, this is m by r, OK? n by m, n by r. So if you write this, it is a11, a12, a1n. A I one, A I two, A I N, A N one, A N two, A N N times B. This is N M column, right? M N rows, M columns. So it's not a square matrix, not necessarily square matrix. So B11, B12, it goes all the way to how many columns does it have? What should I write here? B1, what? R. And here I would have B, let's say, BK1, 
k rho b k 2 this is b k r and the last one would be b what m 1 b m 2 b m r so we want to multiply these two to be able to multiply so how do we do multi matrix multiplication you take a row so a11 so this is we call this c so c is equal to a times b so c11 will be what first row of a multiplied by first column of b so this is dot product you remember dot product okay inner product dot product so multiplication of two vectors you take this a11 b11 okay a11 b11 plus a12 b21 all the way the last one will be a 1m b m1 so multiplication of the first row by the first column so multiplication of the first row of a multiplication of the first column of b okay any question on this one so you have to have unless the number of columns in the first matrix is the same as number of rows in the second matrix, you wouldn't be able to multiply it, isn't it? Because this column has to have same dimension as this, this row has to have same dimension as this column. So number of elements here on this row has to be the same as the element, number of elements in this column. So therefore, when you are multiplying two matrices, this for multiplication to be defined, you have to have number of columns in the in the first matrix matrix on the left has to be the same as number of rows in the second matrix okay so if you were to look if you are looking for some general element of the c matrix okay c is a times b so we are, how what is the relation how do we find it because we are going to use the notation in the coming lecture okay we are going to do some operations some proofs using this kind of stuff so can someone tell me what is this so i can write this in summation let me just write the k equal from one to n a one k b k one this is two m right b k one right this is the summation so what do i write here Cij is equal to k equal from 1 to m, a and b. So what are these indices? A, i, what? A, i, a, what? A, i, right? If you are obtaining an element in the i row of C, you should take i row of matrix A, right? So in the, you should be multiplying i row of A with j row of B, j column of B, okay? So A, I, what? K, so this means this K goes from, in the i row goes from all the way, right? And this is going to be this is going to be the jade column, and it's going to go all the way from top to bottom. So it would take this into, let's call this is jade column. This is i throw. Okay, so this and this will multiply. This is what it means. Okay, clear? So this is how we do multi matrix multiplication. Obviously, this is what is the resulting matrix, by the way? C is what? 
What would be the dimension? How many rows and columns do you have in C? N by R. N by R, right? The system of linear equations we did there. So this is also, right? This is this is A, this is B, right? This happens to have just one column. Okay? Okay, this is A, this is two by two, and this is two by one. So the result is two by one, right? So this is and this is an example of matrix multiplication. So how about if I were to multiply B and A? If I have A times B, would I always have B and A, B times A? No, no right? <coughs> you wouldn't be able to. For example, in this case, B is what? What was the dimension? M by R. And this was N by M. Can you multiply these? Even the multiplication is not possible. It's not defined for them. So you do not have A, B equal B, A. Not only that, not, of course, in some cases, it will be equal. One of them or both of them might not be defined even because of the dimensions. Okay, So you have to have appropriate dimensions to be able to multiply two matrices. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we look at this is microscopic look, way of looking into multiplication of matrices. Okay, we took every element of the matrix and we went through how we multiply two matrices. Is this true or false? There is no such thing, right? This is a definition. This is what much what matrix multiplication means. This is we defined it. Of course, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, etc. So it is a definition of matrix multiplication. Okay, this is how matrix multiplication is defined. So that's it. So when we look at matrices <coughs> column-wise, you say you have A matrix and you have B matrix. You want to look at look at this, okay? One way to look at it is you write B1, B2, and Bn, let's say. Let, for the time being, let me just take both of them n. So let's not get stuck with n um, dimensions, etc. So let's simplify our thinking because it doesn't make any difference on what I am trying to explain. So you can look at these things as multiplication of two matrices like this, OK? look at every component or you can say that I want to see it this is a matrix a b1 okay a b2 a b n for example let me just immediately give you an example let's say I have a matrix 2 1 minus 1 3 and I would like to find another matrix. Let me call it A, B, C, D, such that this is 1, 0, 0, 1. OK? I want to solve this. What am I trying to do here? What would this be when I find the solution? I, 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 this is A. And what would this be? A times something is what? This is called? The identity matrix. If a matrix is multiplied with some other matrix and the result is identity matrix, that matrix is called the inverse of that, or this is inverse of that, right? So we did not teach you how to solve such 
equations, right? We, what did we teach you? We taught you this. Ax is equal to b. You know how to solve it using Gaussian elimination, right? This is what we learned. So how do we solve such a thing? Hmm? Yeah, we will talk about that. So, yes. so that's why I'm leading to. So what using that, you could say that I, I need to solve two equations, 2, 1, minus 3, 3. A, C is equal to 1, 0, right? I can decompose this. And which other one? 2, 1, minus 1, 3, B and D is equal to? 0, 1. So I can look at this column-wise, OK, like this way. And I can look for a solution of each one of these. I can solve for A and C using Gaussian elimination, as we learned last week, and B and D. And then I can put them together. So looking at them column-wise is, is a, also a useful way of looking at system of linear equations. OK? OK. So one other way of looking at it is that I will just give you block matrices. I can have A1, A2, A3, A4, and B is equal to B1 b2, b3, and b4, OK? So sometimes you have these block matrices. So you have this big matrix, and you somehow would like to look at it as matrices as part of it. Example, 1, 1, minus 1, 0, 2, 3. 5, 2, 6, 1, 0, 1. So I can look at it like this. You can say this is A1, this is A2, this is A3, this is A4. So A1, A2, A3, A4. So partition matrix, OK? So I can talk about multiplication of block matrices. So let's say A times B is equal to A1, A2, A3, A4, B1, B2, B3, B4. Okay? So this would be A1, B1 plus a2, b3, and this would be a1, b2, plus a2, b4. This would be a3, b1, plus a4, b3, and this would be a4, a, a3, b2, plus a4, B4 in general. You could have not, you could have many partitions. It doesn't have to be one. I want to go back to Gaussian elimination we talked about.
Remember when we want to do Gaussian elimination, let's say, for this. What is the problem we face? Let's say I also have here the right hand side, okay? <coughs> one minus one, two. I want to perform Gaussian elimination on this. What was the problem? So we have this zero, right? We cannot use this as pivot equation because a11 is zero. So what do we need to do? We need to interchange. So that interchange matrix is called permutation matrix. So what I should multiply this with something from left so that this multiplication will interchange the first row and the second row. What would that be? So it would be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Let's multiply this and see what happens. 0, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1, minus 1. Minus one, two, two, two. Okay. So what will multiplication with this first row and all these columns will pick the second row, right? So this is two, one, one, minus one. Multiplication with this second row with all these columns. This all will multiply with zero, and you just pick this. So it's going to be zero, two, three, one. And this one will, make, will multiply first two rows by zero, and it will just pick the first one. So multiplication by this does not add or sub uh, subtract anything from anything, but just exchanges one row with the other row, right? So this is what we did here. So multiplication with this permutation matrix P times this is P times A and B is equal to this, right? For example, if I want to exchange first and third row, what would be the permit this permutation matrix? Can you tell me? I want to exchange these two. And second row, I want it to remain as it is. Zero, zero, one. This one? Zero, one, zero. Zero, one, zero. This will be? One, yes. If I want to exchange second and third row, what will that be? So this, um, this regardless of this zero, OK? In we are talking about how we exchange rows and zero. So it's going to be 1, 0, 0. Then 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. This is? 1, 0, 1, 0. OK. So these are called permutation matrices. OK? OK. Let's talk about association property. So if you realize our approach to the course was, we did not talk much about matrices and their algebra. We started from very practical things. We started from some equations, and how do we solve them? And we heuristically developed a Gaussian elimination method and things. Now it is time that we become more formal about the language we are talking about. That's why today we are talking about the algebra of matrices. Okay? And then we'll start talking about other deeper subjects. So we have, we have to set the language. So let's say you have A, B, C, S, three matrices. And if we already talked about that you don't have a b equal to b a. So you don't, do not have this 
commutativity. Okay? Not matrix multiplication is not commutative. Matrix multiplication is not meaning a b is not same as b a okay in numbers of course 5 times 10 is 50 and 10 times 5 is also 50 but here it's not okay how about a times b times c is this equal to a times b times c meaning if i if i have three matrices and i am multiplying them does it make a difference that I first multiply B and C, and then I multiply the result with A, or I first multiply A and B and multiply C with it? Would that make a difference? Who says yes? Who says no? Who says yes? Does it make a difference? So, so this would be different. One, how many people? And how many say? It wouldn't make a difference. Who says it wouldn't make a difference? The others, they don't know, right? <laughs> As a matter of fact, it doesn't make a difference, but we have to prove it, of course. You cannot just believe it because the uh, professor says so, OK? So <laughs> we have to prove it. Now, we will just prove this. This is prove it, OK? In science, and especially in mathematics, whatever we say, we have to prove it, right? So how do you prove it? Just direct proof. Let's just talk about, let's say, let me just use the same language. Let me call, just so that we don't get confused, A times B times C. We call this H. And this, we call this G. Of course, we will find out that they are the same thing. But assume they are two different things. We will conclude that they are the same thing, OK? And let's call E is A times B, and F is B times C. So what is? F i j. F is this, right? B times C. What is this? Who is going to tell me that summation? Assume these are just all n by n, OK? They don't have to be, but they have to have the appropriate dimensions, right? So that they, their multiplication should be defined. But for the time being, let's assume they are just n by n, right? for ease of it. OK, so this is k equal from 1 to n. So I am multiplying B and C. B, I, K, then C, K, J. Good. Okay. So since now we have B and C, then we can talk about H, I, J. What is H, I, J? H i j is equal to, let me call this index now, index now here L. L from 1 to n. What is going to be here? This is multiplication of, OK, H. I can also say this is A times F, right? This is from L 1 to n. What do I say here now? A i L times F. F, L, J. Very good. OK. Now let me just substitute it here. This is equal to L equal from 1 to N, A, I, L. Another summation, K equal from 1 to N, B, I, K, C, K, J. Let me just put this on the side, OK? Now I'm going to do the other one and see if they match, right? That's if they are the same thing. OK. So 
let's just underline this. We are going to compare with that one. Now let's call, let's calculate uh, EIJ. Okay, EIJ is what? R equal from 1 to n. I am using, these are called dummy variables, right? It doesn't matter what you call these dummy variables. So you can call them any name you want. You can even call them dummy, right? They won't get funded. So they don't change anything. They are just R equal for 1 to n. What is this? This is, remember, E is A times B. So this is going to be A, I, R times B, R, J, right? And now G is equal to A times B times C. This is was E, right? Okay. So in this, this here was I. It shouldn't be I, right? So it should be dummy variable. So this is L. So we said they are the same, so for them to be the same, this would be I. Because you see here FIJ. So here you have FLJ. So this is, uh, this should be L. So wherever you have F here, it should be FLJ. Okay? Now, during the break, I had some comments from some of your friends. They said, Sir, please go a bit slower, okay? Especially, what is, who thinks I should go slower? Who thinks I should be, I should slow down? One, two, three, four. Okay, even one, one is, <laughs> okay. Okay, let's say I am multiplying A and B, right? So I will do this slowly so everybody now understands what is matrix multiplication. Okay, so I want to obtain this element, one, one element. Okay, what should I do? I should multiply first row of the first matrix on the left with the first column, right? Why? Because it is one, one element. So it's, it would be my one times three, three, minus two times one, so it becomes one, two times zero. So this is one. Okay, I want to now calculate this second element. So this is one, two element. So what does that mean? It should be first row into second column, right? So one times minus one is minus one. Then minus two times one is minus two, again minus three, and two times one is two, so it is minus one. So that this third element, this first row times the third column, right? So one times two is two, minus two times zero is zero, two times one is one, so this is four. So I want to calculate now this is one three element, now this is one element, so this is second row multiplied by the first column. 
So 1 times 3 is 3, plus 5 times 1 is 5, so it's 8. 1 times 0 is 0, so it is 8. Now 2, 2 element, this one. So second row with second column. 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. 5 times 1 is 5. 4 and 1 times 1 is 1, so it is 5. And this one, 2, 3 element. Second row into third column. So this 1 times 2 is 2. 5 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. So 3. And this one, 3. Like 1 times 3 is 3. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. So it is 3. This one, 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. So this is 0. And this is 1 times 2 is 2. 0 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. So it is 3. Did everybody understand this multiplication? Yes. Because this is the bottom of it. So I was telling some of your friends in the break, during the break that in this class, I can ask me anything, how to add, how to subtract, how to multiply. Everything is normal and legal. Don't ask this question in the, after two years, OK? When you are in the third year or fourth year, don't ask. Uh, this symbol. So therefore, today, there is nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be embarrassed of. You can ask anything, because this is the first time you are seeing, some of you are facing matrices and maybe vector algebra and things like this. So therefore, when you don't understand something, please stop me. Yes. Excuse me? This is not a method. This is a definition of matrix multiplication. This is how we define multiplying two matrices. For example, somebody else could say that, you know how I multiply matrices? I just take the corresponding elements and multiply them, right? So of course, there is no such thing. Somebody could say, OK, I just multiply two matrices by multiply one and three, and that is this. And I multiply this and this, and that is this. So that's a definite. If, if it is useful, and if it's going to help you as an engineer or a mathematician, you can just, of course, have built it up with axioms and everything. If it, if it turns out to be useful, that could be also a kind of operation. Or somebody could say, uh, matrix multiplication means I take five times of this and three times of that and multiply those. But this is a definition. This is. What matrix multiplication means. There is no proof for that. So what did we prove? We proved said if this is the matrix multiplication as you defined it, okay, this is how we define matrix multiplication. How did we define matrix addition? How did we define it? How do we add two matrices? A plus B. Okay? If I add these two matrices, what would that be? This plus that, right? Four. This. This. Four. This is two. Six. One. 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 And two. So this is how matrix addition is defined. Okay. This is definition of it. This is how we postulate it. This is how. so based on these things we say okay if. This is the matrix multiplication. This is how you do matrix multiplication. OK, is this true under that definition? So we have to prove that, right? So we have to prove that this is true, and that's what we proved here. Any other questions? See, 
Of course, when we wrote AX is equal to B, here we use this definition of matrix multiplication, okay? We meant that this, this AX is how you multiply a matrix with a vector, right? We used that. We used, we did the matrix multiplication. Of course, so what your friend is saying is, When you have AB, if you remember, we said that we can look at this as B1 column wise, right? B2, BN, and this would be AB1, AB2, ABN, right? So, and this thing, like when we wrote 2x. 1 plus x2 is equal to 5, minus x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 1, okay? We wrote this in matrix form, 2, 1, minus 1, 2, x1, x2 is equal to 5 and y. Here, of course, we are defining matrix multiplication somehow, right? This is how we multiply a matrix with a vector. So this is two into this, this into this. So this is, again, we use this without talking about it, but this, so what does this mean? This means this is multiplied with this plus this multiplied with that. Second row, this multiplied with this, this multiplied with that is equal to that, okay? So this is inherent to that. So by Defining this multiplication of a matrix with a vector, your friend is saying you already defined matrix multiplication. Of course, yeah, what you are saying is true. Okay, so so you don't have to define the full entire. Once you do this, because of this interpretation of multiplication, you can show matrix multiplication in terms of column-wise multiplication. That means. This is multiplication matrix with a column, matrix with a column, matrix with a column, and the result is the same. Okay? Yes? This? This one? This is, this is. So you, this is the first time you're coming to my class, I guess. Yeah, there's a big problem. So you should watch my first two weeks video. You are lucky that they are on the internet, okay? Otherwise, I have to redo the entire two lectures. If you were here and you didn't understand, I would go over it. But since you didn't come, I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, if you have problems, you can come to office hours or you can catch me, but first watch the videos. So it's important you come to classes, okay? Anybody else has the same question? Okay. Don't uh, misunderstand me, but it would be unfair to your friends. Okay? Yes. Transpose of a matrix. Again, this is a definition. Okay? Let me give you an example before I do it. So A is equal to 1, 2, 5, 3. Let's say A transpose is just you leave the diagonal as it is and everything else switches 2 and 5. Okay? This is called transpose. So, A is equal to AIJs, right? A transpose 
let's say, let's call B is equal to A transpose. I always find it useful that I rename it, not to make mistake, okay? A transpose, so that means B I J is equal to A J I, okay? Let me do a three by three as well. A is equal to one, two, three, one, two, minus three, so that you don't think it has to do with index. Minus one, five, two and a half. And I shouldn't always use round numbers, right? People will not misunderstand. So zero, one, minus two. So A transpose is, so let me write the first column. So what should I do? You just read the first row for me. I will write it here. One, two, minus three. Second row column, minus one, five, 2.5. And third, zero, one, minus two. As you see, the diagonal doesn't change, but everything else is like mirror image of the other one, okay? Zero went from here to there, etc. E is A transpose, F is B transpose, G is A times B, H is G transpose. I am doing this so we don't get confused in the indexes and things like this, okay? So G I G I J, G I J is equal to this. So K is equal to 1 to n, a, i, k, b, k, j. Since that's just a times b, so this i row of a multiplied with j column of b, right? And since h is just transpose of g, then h, i, j is equal to G, J, I, right? Here K is equal from one to N, A, J, K, B, K, I. Since this is just transpose of that. I, J is equal to, L is equal from one to M, F, I, L, E, L, J. Right? And what is FIL? F was transpose of B, right? So this is L equal from 1 to M. F is B, so that is B L I times E is transpose of A, so this is A. Uh, J, L. Okay? In other words, you just interchange this L equal from 1 to M, A, J, L times B, L, I. It's the same thing, just the dummy variable name is different. Okay? So, we proved that AB transpose is just in the reverse order, transpose of the second matrix and transpose of the first matrix. Let me do an example. This one works with both. Let's say a is, a is equal to 1, 2, minus 1, 5, and b is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. a times b is equal to 1, 2, minus 1, 5, 
zero, one, two, three. This is, okay, let's do this multiplication. Four, two plus six is eight, minus one into zero, 10, minus one and 15, this is 14. And AB transpose is, what is it? Transpose of this matrix? Everybody, just definition of transpose, wake up. What is it? 4, 10, 8, 14, right? Okay, now we will do the other one. A transpose is 1, this is what? Minus 1, 2, 5. And B transpose is 0, 2, 1, 3. So B transpose, A transpose is equal to 0, 2, 1, 3, 1, minus 1, 2, 5. This is okay. Two six is eight. One seven, right? Okay. Okay. So I made the same mistake. You see, at the same point. Okay. So let us multiply this. So we do if I do it alone, I make mistakes. So let's do it together. Okay? So what will be this element? Zero times one, two times two. So it is four. Zero times minus one is zero. Two times five is ten. One, six, seven. Minus one plus fifteen. Looks the same, right? This is also. So, we will see uh, after maybe 10, 15 minutes that inverse, for inverse also same thing is true. Well, let me do that immediately. It doesn't have to, it doesn't, it is much more easier to prove it, yes. In English. In English, try. Just these are just, I define this here. See, so to, to make these steps easier to program, huh? The right side. The right side. This. I said that M. M. I called M is B transpose times A transpose, which is F times E, okay? I said, what is really the IJ element of this multiplication? Okay, I said this is F times E, so IJ is I throw of L and J throw of E should be multiplied. And I went to FIL, F is just transpose of B transpose. So that means just when you call this B, you have to switch the indexes. Okay, E, when you call it A, you have to switch the indexes, okay? Then I also interchange these two to arrive to that one. You go over it at home, okay? Any other question? Yes. Yeah, just these are two numbers. These are not matrices. These are numbers. <laughs> yes. Good. Any other questions? Okay. Now Let me tell you something very important. In this course, I will try to give you the proofs of whatever we 
we present to you, okay? Instead of, okay, this is how it is, just memorize it and do it, okay? This is not my approach, as you realize from the beginning. Whatever we do, we have to look at it as a scientist, not as somebody who is given a book and his, his job is just uh, use that user manual and just implement the steps. No. Okay, this is A transpose, B transpose, this is how it is. Okay, you, you have to believe me, I'm your professor. No, you don't have to believe anybody. You have to understand this because this way of thinking will enable you in one day, hopefully, to figure out a solution of a problem that nobody was able to figure out before, okay? Last night I was talking to a 29-year-old young man. He did his medical education and his PhD, and he is a researcher in a university in New York. He's a Turkish guy, 29-year-old. His publication came out in Nature uh, magazine yesterday. He discovered that pancreatic cancer is very much related and correlated with uh, some kind of bacteria or something, mantar. What's mantar in English? I don't know. Huh? Fungus, yes. I knew that fungus is related to some liver cancer, but now he found out that in pancreatic cancer, in every case, he discovered that there is a fungus, a, a, some type of fungus that is related to that. And he said that when we treat that fungus, and that fungus is in intestines, so it, it just travels from intestines to your pancreas and it makes you pancreatic cancer. When you, he said when we treat that intestines, pancreatic cancer disappears. I mean, that young guy, and he is, of course, I have been supporting him for, for some time. I'm proud of what he's achieving. He's a medical doctor. I'm, I'm an electrical engineer, right? But science is science. So that, that young guy is changing history by discovering such a thing, OK? So he discovered the mechanism of pancreatic, and my mother died from pancreas cancer. So it is also very personal uh, related to, to me. So always say that, OK, if pancreas cancer, if there was a solution, somebody would have done it. So who am I to find the solution? You can solve the, the greatest problem on Earth. You are a human being. You are very smart. You should have self-confidence. And you should have scientific way of looking into things, OK? You should look to discover, not to memorize. So discovery is very important. OK, inverse matrix. So we are defining something so that now we can use, start using terminology. Inverse matrix means given a matrix A, we call a matrix A, A inverse. If it exists, when you multiply it with A, it gives you I. In this case, it is called left inverse, OK? If it's not a square matrix, then you can have a left inverse as well. You can have left inverse or right inverse or whatever. But inverse of a matrix, if it is a square matrix, we will show that A times A inverse is also identity, OK? Such a matrix is called an inverse matrix. OK. So is this unique? Let's ask a question and prove it. OK? Let's say I gave you a matrix, and all 78 of you, so we have 78 people. We are supposed to have 78 people in our classroom. And you all somehow solved the question and brought me an answer. Do they have, do they all have to be the same? Can they be different from one another? Meaning, Let's say I have A times X is identity. That means, what would that mean by definition? X is an inverse of A, right? Identity means what? Identity, I did not define it. Identity means 1, 1, 1, and everything else is 0. This is called the identity matrix. 
Okay? Ax is identity, and let's say somebody else said that, okay, sir, I have a different solution. It's also multiplied by A, and it gives me identity. Oh, can this be true? Meaning, can a matrix A have two inverses that are different from each other? Isn't this a valid question? Okay. We say that, let's assume proof. Let's assume x is different from y, meaning x minus y is different from 0, right? With this assumption, now I will subtract ax ay side by side. Let me subtract them. What do I have? Ax minus ay is equal to i minus i is 0. Of course, this is 0 matrix, right? It's not 0 scalar, right? So if I take this ax minus y is equal to 0, x. Okay. What would that mean? That would mean that a if x x if a is if a is non singular. What is the only solution for such a, a such an equation? Ax is equal to b. Huh? X is equal to zero, right? This means x minus one has to be equal to zero if a is non-singular, right? That means x is equal to y, but this contradiction. So that means x and y cannot be different. They are, there is only one such solution. If A is non-singular, non-singular means, by, by definition, non-singular means non-singular means AX is equal to zero if and only if X is equal to zero, meaning there is no other solution other than X equal to zero. That's the definition of non-singular, okay? If there is another solution, there will be infin infinitely many solutions to that. Right? There would be like uh, last row is zero or something like that. In the, so if there is an inverse, then it is unique. OK? How about left inverse and right inverse? Are they the same? So A minus A is equal to A, A inverse times A is equal to identity. So does this mean also that A times A inverse is identity? OK. OK. So let's call. left inverse as x, and let's call right inverse as i, as if left inverse and right inverse, let's assume they can be different, OK? 
so in this case what would you have if you multiply both sides by x inverse then you have a is equal to x inverse so this would give you a is equal to x inverse right from here a y y inverse is equal to i times y inverse that would give you this is identity and this would give you a is equal to y inverse that means x inverse and y inverse are the same that means x and y are the same okay so therefore left inverse and right inverse for a square matrix are the same okay now let's stop here and we'll talk about uh, LU factorization and Gauss Jordan, etc. Okay, 10 minutes and let's come back in 10, uh, 2.25, 10 minute break. Okay, let's start. Now, I will give you a very clear proof of what I said now, okay? I, I worked it out. Uh, before the class and I will give it to you. Now, let's assume, let's assume A x is equal to zero and x is different from zero, okay? Let's assume this. So let's assume that we have an A matrix and x, a x is, is zero and x is not zero, okay? In that case, in such case, there is no inverse. In that case, a has no inverse. a has no inverse, okay? So proof, let's say A times A inverse X is, let's assume, let's assume A times A inverse and A X is equal to zero X different from zero, right? This is true and this is true. So what do we do? Let's take a x is equal to zero and multiply both sides by a inverse since we said it exists, right? So a x is equal to zero for x different from zero. So let's take this equality and multiply from left by a inverse. So by definition of a inverse, what is this? This is identity. And this is a inverse times zero. Anything times zero is zero, right? So this is identity times x is x is zero. So this is telling you that, no, sir, you can't have it both ways. If x is different from zero and ax is equal to zero, then you would, the end you have an inverse, that would mean that you multiply both sides and that x equal to zero. So this is proof by contradiction. So your hypothesis is wrong. So it cannot be true, okay? So that means if ax is equal to zero for a non-zero x, that means there is no possibility of a inverse. We call that singular matrix. That's the definition of a singular matrix, okay? And singular matrix is by this proof that's such a simple proof, right? Does not have inverses. Okay, now we go back to computation again. So much for the algebra and proofs and things. Now let's talk about how do we calculate to 
be able to use this board I put on this clothing today, okay? So let's say I want to find, let's say I want to find A inverse such that this is satisfied. Again, A is an n by n matrix, right? I is identity matrix. Okay? So let's call this x, right? Let's call this x. So I want to <coughs> solve this. This is, so we, what we learned is that x was a vector, right? What we learned before is that we have a coefficient matrix A, and we have an unknown matrix, unknown vector that we want to solve so that A, X is equal to B. So how can we formulate the problem of finding the inverse of a matrix as a system of linear equation? That's what we are doing now, okay? We say that call this unknown matrix, which is the inverse of the A. We know that A inverse exists. It's, it's not singular, et cetera, okay? We are passing those. So an inverse exists, but how to compute it? Again, we say that, okay, this is something that I will multiply A by that, and the result will be identity, right? So it's B in this case is this. So let me write this in. This form, so let's call this first column of x, second column, and the right hand side 1, 0, 0, etc. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So I can decompose this into ax1 equal to 1, 0, 0, 0, right? ax2. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, etc. A, X, N. So how many of these do I need to solve? N system of linear equations, right? Who understood what I am doing now? I will stop here and ask. Who, okay. What is it that you didn't understand? This is very important, very simple. There is nothing difficult, it's just what we did last two weeks is this is, okay? I have a matrix called A, I want to find inverse of it, okay? So inverse of it is unknown, I want to compute it. So we want to develop a computational method to obtain the inverse of the matrix. We already learned how to solve AX equal to B. For any A, any B, we know how to solve this using Gaussian elimination, isn't it? So what I am doing now is that how can I convert this problem into a Gaussian elimination problem, right? So far, we learned that. What I am saying is that, as I explained in the first lecture of today, I can look at matrix multiplication column-wise, isn't it? So let me just go one more step here, okay? This is what? A x one. I wrote this before. A x two. A x n equal to one zero zero etc. Right? This column. If these two matrices are equal, every element of both sides are equal. Every column. This is equal to that, that is equal to that, that is equal to that. Do you agree? Who understood this one? Who did not understand? Please ra raise your hand. Okay. So there is a difference between who understood and who did not understand. So I don't know what that is. Okay? Let me just illustrate this. 
Because I want everybody to understand this very clearly. A is, let's say, 1, 2, minus 1, 3. Okay? I want to find 1, 2, minus 1, 3. Let's say A, B, C, D is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? I want to solve this. So I call this here x. So what I did here is, okay, let, I said let me write this as follows. This can be written as 1, 2, minus 1, 3 times AC. This is the first column of the multiplied matrix. 1, 2, minus 1, 3 times BD is equal to 0, 1. So 1, 0, I'm sorry. 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So I have here, this has to be equal to that. This has to be equal to that, right? Now is it clear to everybody? Okay? This part again, okay? Let me explain in a big way then. What was the matrix? Just tell me that so that I can quickly write it here. One, two, what was it? One, two, minus one? Three. Okay, this is my matrix A. I would like to compute, compute, okay, this. Now, so far we did not learn how to compute a inverse. But what did we learn? We learned how to solve system of linear equations. So my approach is, can I convert this problem into a problem I know how to solve? You remember this approach that we developed? So I know how to solve system of linear equations. This, I, I want to use what I know to solve a different problem, OK? I say that, OK, what is? What is the inverse? It's just, you multiply with A, I call it X, this is unknowns, something, things to be discovered, we call them X, right? In mathematics, that's what we do. How can I find an X? How can I solve for X so that this is 1, 0, 0, 1? Okay? As a matter of fact, let's just do this. Then I will do the general explanation. It's better. OK. So what I say is that 1, 2, minus 1, 3 times A, B, C, D is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. OK? I could just directly obtain here four equations for unknowns, but I don't want to do that. I want to preserve a structure here for you to see. OK? So what I will do is that I will just, this is column one, this is column two, right? I will multiply this A with first column. So I call it one, two, minus one, three, into A, C, okay? What is this result? It is A plus two C. This is minus A plus three C, isn't it? So let's do this in parallel here. So this is the first column of this multiplication. And here, this one, 1, 2, minus 1, 3, times BD. And what will that be here? B plus 2D minus B plus 3D, OK? And this is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1 is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. Of course, this, this thing is just to make it easier for you to see. There is no need. They don't have any other meaning. Then. So these two matrices are equal, means all their columns are equal, right? 
So all their A11 is equal, everything is equal, but I'm just, I want to look at it column-wise. So to be able to make the parallel with Gaussian elimination. So that would mean A plus 2C is equal to 1 minus A plus 3C is equal to 0. Okay? And this is B plus 2D would be 0 minus B plus 3D would be 1. On the other hand, here, what do I have? I have 1, 2, minus 1, 3, AC is equal to 1, 0. OK? And the other one will give me 1, 2, minus 1, 3, BD is equal to 0, 1. OK? So I need to just solve this and solve that, and I will obtain A, B, C, D. And that's going to be my inverse solution. Is this clear? Yes. This one? You didn't get this. Who else didn't understand this? OK. <laughs> we went. Now, we said that, let's assume we have a matrix A and X, we have this, we have an X that is different from zero and A times X is equal to zero. So there is an X that makes AX equal to zero. Okay, X is different from zero, right? Our claim is that such an A cannot have an inverse, okay? Say, let's say, let's assume it exists. Let's assume that AX is equal to zero and A inverse, AA inverse is identity. So it has an inverse, okay? Let's assume that. In that case, just AX is equal to zero, right? You multiply both sides by A inverse since you said, you say it exists. So when you have like AA inverse is what? Identity, that means this identity times x is what? x. Right hand side, a inverse times 0 is 0. So x is equal to 0. But we assume it is not 0. So this contradicts. What does that mean? That means either there is, you cannot have such 0, such an x different from 0, or a inverse doesn't, if, if, there, if it exists, then there is no a inverse. Proof by contradiction. OK? Yes. Can we go back to that one now? This is, a, this is a nice, very simple proof, right? Just tells you that if your matrix A has a non-zero null space, we will talk about it in vector spaces, it is singular, and you cannot have an inverse for that matrix. It's so easy to show. OK. Again, going back to the problem we are dealing with now, how to compute inverse of a given matrix using Gaussian elimination? One way would be, we say that, OK, let's look at it a times x is equal to, this is the equation. This is an equation we need to solve. And this is really a system of linear equation. But we are used to seeing system of linear equation is a matrix into a vector. Now here, a matrix and another unknown matrix. So how do we solve this? I was showing you here on an example that, OK, this is really nothing other than solving two system of linear equations that using Gauss, uh, Gaussian elimination. So 1, 2, minus 1, 3, uh, AC equal to 1, 0, and 1, 2, minus 1, 3, BD equal to 0, 1. So use the algorithm you already taught you twice, and you obtain it. Is this clear? Now, one thing is very important. When we are solving this, what are we going to do? 1, 2, 
1, minus 1, 3, 0, right? When we are solving the other one, it's going to be 1, 2, 0, minus 1, 3, 1. What is the difference between these two? Only the last column is different, isn't it? So the pivots and the multipliers and everything is the same for both of them, isn't it? It doesn't change. So you don't have to do it again and again and again. You just do it once here, OK? And take it in the matrix form. So what you do is that this is Gauss-Jordan method. What we say is that just uh, start with, so we are, this is what we are trying to solve. Ax is equal to i, right? Ax is equal to i. So we will now extend that. And we will perform one second. We will take AI, okay, like we did before, and we will, by performing some operations, we will come to some i and x, OK? By doing, what we will do is that we will do forward elimination on this a, OK? And then we will do also backward elimination. Unlike Gaussian elimination, we will do Gauss-Jordan, and we will do backward elimination. And what will happen here is that this, in the first part, by doing all these matrix operations, we will bring in this first part into an i, and there will be something in the second part, OK? That thing is going to be the A inverse. So now we will talk about that. Why is that an A inverse? OK. For this, we will look into the Gaussian elimination, the pivots and multipliers and everything as matrix multiplication, OK? Let me just illustrate this on an example that I think I did here. OK. So let's say I have a matrix 2, 3, 1, 5. Is it the same? Oh, OK. So AI is 2, 3, 1, 5, 1, 0, 0, 1, right? Now, what is the multiplier? So what are, what are we going to do here? We just try to make this 0, right? Knock, knock this out. What is the multiplier here? This over this, right? So L is equal to 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 times first row is subtracted from this one. So the first row will remain the same. 2, 3, 1, 0. This will be 0. So 5, this will be what? 5 minus 1 half times 3, which is 7 over 2. And this will be 0 minus 1 half times 1. So this is, and this is, this remains 1, OK? So we are doing now Gaussian elimination. But instead of having here one column, now we have two columns, OK? OK, now here, what we do is we continue. We do not, we do not do, perform back substitution. We will continue here, OK? What I will do is I will divide everything by this 
in this row and everything by this row. What happens then? I will do scaling here, OK? This becomes 1, then 3 over 2, right? This is 1 over 2, and this is 0. And this, 0, 1, and this is what? Minus 1 half over 7 over 2. That means minus 1 half, 2 over 7. So this is minus 1 over 7, and this is 2 over 7. Where? I scaled, I just, I scaled this row with this because I want to have an identity here. Remember? This is what we set out. So we want to have an identity here. Okay, we start from this, and this identity will come here. So I'm trying to make this diagonal one, right? I need to scale. You remember I told you if you scale both sides of an equation, equation doesn't change. You remember that? In the first class, or after the seminar. I said, if you add the same thing to both sides of the equation, it doesn't change. As a matter of fact, during the earthquake, it happened also, right? I was explaining exactly that one. When you add the same quantity to both sides of the equation, the equation doesn't change. When you multiply both sides of the equation by the same number, it doesn't change. So I multiply this row, this equation, this second row is an equation, right? Divide it by this 7 over 2, and this is the same equation, OK? And I divide the first line by 2, and it's the same equation. Now, I want to knock this out so to obtain i. What do I do now? Tell me. What should I do now? I will now, a multiple of this will be subtracted from this to make this 0. What multiple of this I should subtract from? As you see, this is, since this is 0, it's not going to change this. So what, what will happen? What is that multiple? What? 3 over 2. 3 over 2 times this should be subtracted from this. Then that becomes 1. This is 0, of course. So this is minus so 1 half minus 3 over 2 times 1 over 7, OK? So this is 7. over so 2 over 7 so this is 2 over 7 and this is 3 over 2 times this subtracted from this so this is 0 minus did I do this right I didn't do it right right this should be mine this is plus 5 over 7. OK? <laughs> this is this is 5 over 7. OK? Of course, this will remain the same. Let me just write it there automatically. OK, so this one is 0 minus. 3 over 2 times 2 over 7, right? This is minus 3 over 7. One second. So I want to ha find what multiple of this row I should subtract from the first row so that this element becomes 0. Since this is 1, right? So what multiple of the, what should I multiply this and subtract from this so that this becomes 0? OK? So 3 over 2. Since this is already we scaled and made this all 1, so 3 over 2 subtract from 0. And now 3 over 2 times this should be subtract from 1 half. 3 over 2 times this, subtract from this one. And this is the result. OK? So what did I obtain here? 
at the x is equal to 1 over 7 times 5, 2, minus 3, and minus 1. OK, let me multiply with x, a, with a. What happens? <coughs> Ax, let's see if this has any special property. 1, 2, 3, 1, 5 times 5 minus 3 minus 1, 2. OK, I will just take 1, 7 here. What is this? 2 times 5 minus? So 10 minus 3 is 7. Minus 6 plus 6, this is 0. Plus 5 minus 5, this is 0. Minus 3 plus 10, this is 7. And you have here, and this is 1, 0, 0, 1, right? So when you do this, and I was so you start from this, and you perform row operations, and you obtain an i here. Whatever is here is the inverse of a. So of course, we didn't prove this. Now we will prove this, OK? This turns out by this example, we observed it. But I am telling you that this is a inverse. So we will see why it is true. Any questions? I'm sure there are questions here. OK. Did you understand it? Yes. Can you change rows in this operation? We will talk about that later. Uh, see, since we are finding the inverse of A, you can change, but we have to account for it. Ask me this after I finish what I am doing, because it will make much more sense there, OK? If I get into that, it will confuse everything. You are a bit ahead of the <laughs> subject now. Yes? Uh, in the middle part, uh, uh, why did we do Scale. Second. This this one? Yes. Why did we do this? Uh, why did we multiply the first row to 1 over 2, the second row to 1 over 2? Yes. The reason is that. I put my objective in the beginning that I want to start this. I want to start. I want to put A and identity matrix side by side and perform row operations by subtracting multiples of rows from each other, etc. Do whatever you want in terms of row operations. And you obtain an identity matrix after the row operations in the left side of this matrix and something on the other remaining part, OK? So I need an identity here. So when I have, have this here, I finish my forward elimination. Of course, this is just 2 by 2. If it was 10 by 10, we would sweat a lot and we would spend one hour until we get to this point, right? I know my objective is that what, what do I want here? I want, I want here 1, z 1, 1, 1. And this is zero. This is what I want. Isn't it? It's just two by two. One zero zero one. Okay. Here I want one zero zero one. Okay. I want this one zero zero one. So, so how do I get one? I have to scale it. How else? Right. I have to scale this. So I scale this, and this becomes this. Good. The zero is already there. I took care of it by forward elimination. Scaling this, this also becomes one. So what remains is to make this, this one zero. And if, if I'm done, then I will call this x. OK? Is it more clear now? OK. Now, while this is here, I want to do something else. OK? Now, ah, 
A X A I. Okay. This is two, three, one, five, one, zero, zero, one. Okay. I performed an operation here. What did I do? I I have this multi. I computed my multiplier. Okay, and subtracted. One half times this multiplier from the second row, right? How can I do that as a multi matrix multiplication? Okay, let's consider this. So I have this 2, 3, 1, 0, 1, 5, 0, 1. I want the second row to remain the same. So I want to have first row remain the same 1, 0, and here. Multiplier is one half, okay? And I want to multiply the first row by one half and subtract it from the second line. Okay, this is this is the matrix that will do that. Okay, let's let's do the multiplication. So one zero. So as you see, this okay one zero to one times two zero times one. This is two, right? One times three times zero point five is three. 1 times 1, 0 times 0 is 1. 1 times 0, 0 times 1 is 0. So this multiplication does not change the first row. What happens to the second row? Minus 1 half times 2 is minus 1. Plus 1 is 0. OK? Now I put equal here. I was putting tilde, right? I didn't put equal. I said this is equivalent. That does this mean? This system of linear equation has the same solution as this system of linear equation. It's not equality. They are not the same equation, right? Now here, I have equality. I, I have this. I multiply it with this one, OK? I, let me call this E1. I, this is, we can call it a pivot matrix, OK? I, when I multiply it with this one, the result is that the first row remains the same. And let's see what happens in the second row. Minus 1 half times 2 is minus 1. Plus 1, this becomes 0. Minus 1 half times 3 plus 5, which is 7 over 2, right? It's the same. I don't need to do that. And minus 1 half times 1 plus 0 is minus 1 half, and minus 1 half times 0 is, is 1. Now, what do I need to do? What did I do? I scaled, right? So I will take this one. So I, I, sh shall I call this, this operation E1 times A and I? Now I will, and this is equal to what? This is E1, A, I, right? This is the row operation. I have performed, this is the result. Now, what did I do? I did, I did scaling, right? Let me do that one. Okay? OK, let me call that S1, 1 half, 0, 0, uh, 2 over 7. So if I multiply with this one, what do I get? So S1 times E1 times AI. What is this equal to now? It's equal to this. Please read that for me. 1, 3 over 2, 1 half, 0. The other one, 1, no, not 1. This is 0, 1, minus 1 over 7, 2 over OK, you get the picture now. So what do I do now? 
I need to find a scaling matrix that there is a, when I multiply it from left hand side, it will take three and a half times the second row and subtract it from the first one. Okay? What should that be? So the second row will remain the same, okay? First row will be 1 minus 3 over 2 times, let's see, 1, 3 over 2, 1 half, 0, 0, 1, minus 1 over 7, 2 over 7, right? Let's see what happens. This is 1, isn't it? Let me just bring it up here so everybody can see. 1 times 1 plus 0, 1. Then 3 half minus 3 half is 0. So this is 1, 0. Then 1 half plus 3 over 2 times 7. What was that? Okay. 5 over 7. And this one, 0 minus 3 times 2 over 2 times 7 is 2 over 7, right? Now oh, this one, minus 3 over 7, yes. And this is 0, 1. This doesn't change, minus 1 over 7. And this is 2 over 7. So this is E2. As you see, I can call now E2, S1, E1 times AI is equal to I and X. Can I call this E? I call that E. You see, here we are doing Gaussian elimination. Why am I doing this? We already did the Gaussian elimination last two weeks, right? Over and over and over. Now here we are doing Gaussian, I mean, we are interpreting Gaussian elimination as matrix multiplication. Okay, so we are performing Gaussian elimination by multiplying our matrix from left by certain matrices that does what Gaussian elimination is achieving. Okay, so Gaussian elimination is now done by matrix multiplication. Why am I doing this? Because I want to obtain a matrix that does that transformation. This is the fastest way. I mean, this is the this is what you do. What what does uh, Mat, MATLAB does and everybody everything else. Does. For two by two, it's very easy. Let me tell you, but I have to tell you what is the determinant. So, for two by two, it's I can just I knew what this is when I look at it. I just replace this, exchange this, and just change the sign of this and divide it by the determinant. Okay. <laughs> yes. Huh? 
Can we change? Of course, why would you? Again, he asked me that question. I will answer you that afterwards. OK? OK. Now, what is this in E, when, if you call in this order, S1, E1, OK? E times A, I is equal to I, X. OK? This is what we obtained, isn't it? We did it together. It's the older up there. So let's do this multiplication. So what do you have in block wise? E times A and E times identity is equal to identity and X. What is E times identity? It's E, right? Do you agree? Just be patient for two more minutes. This is very important. So E A, this means E times A is identity. OK? What does that mean by definition? What is E? Huh? Inverse. E is equal to A inverse. OK, if E is equal to A inverse, that means x is equal to, since e is x, that means x is equal to, isn't it? Isn't this beautiful? One wants to cry, right? It's so beautiful. <laughs> Such a nice idea. So by performing these operations on the left and everything, you arrive at this beautiful result. Ask me, so that everybody can listen to the response. <laughs> because we have our uh, guests here, our brothers from other countries, they don't unfortunately speak Turkish. <laughs> in our time, education was 100% in Turkish here. Our guests would take one year Turkish lessons somewhere and learn Turkish and then come and join us. Now it is the opposite. <laughs> OK. Please try. I missed the uh, E2 as well. What are these? OK. OK. So that is the whole thing. <laughs> OK. So what I did is this. We start from this one, right? Gauss, Gauss and elimination kind of an idea. We said that this is the right-hand side. You remember we had it A and B. If we were performing row operations, taking multiple of this, second row, third row, etc., and try to have a upper triangular matrix here, right? So we do this. We are now, we are saying that, okay, let's look at that operation as multi matrix multiplication, okay? So we form this and we say that, okay, what kind of a matrix I can multiply this from left so that this will be knocked out? This will be 0, OK? And it turns out it's this. So we did this multiplication, 1 times 2, 0 times 1, right? When you do this multiplication, the first row remains the same. So when you multiply with this little matrix, this big matrix, you will obtain the first row will remain the same. 1 half times this plus 1 is 0. Minus 1 half times 3 plus 5 is 7 over 2, etc. So all these row operations we did in Gauss and elimination, they have a corresponding matrix multiplication process. OK? So we just named them. We said that, OK, here we were using tilde, meaning this is not equal to this. 
this system of linear equation has the same solution as this one. Okay, these two have the same axis as their solution, but they are not equal. But here, they are equal. We have something and we are multiplying it with a matrix. What we obtain is equal to this one, right? So, yes. That's, then we said our aim, what we set out to do is we, we started so that we will have AI and by performing matrix operation, row operations, we will obtain identity and some X. Okay? So all those matrix operations, we call this first one as E1. And that's what where we got. E1 times this is this, right? It's clear now? So now I want to, since I want to have an identity here, I said, let me scale this. So multiply it with a scaling matrix. So when you do this, you multiply with this matrix from left, it will scale the first row. Scaling an equation, if you have x is equal to 25, then 4x is equal to 100. Equality doesn't change, right? You can just multiply it up and down. Doesn't matter. So multiplying it doesn't break the equality. So s times this will make this diagonal one. So I'm getting closer to my response. This is a computational method. And the next step is how can I uh, knock out this one? OK? So a multiple of this should be subtracted from multiple of this equation should be subtracted from this line. OK? And what will do that? And that is this one. OK? And you do that. That's it. Yeah, there is a natural order. But it doesn't matter which order you do it. As long as uh, this doesn't require you that you do it in this order or that order, if by multiplying with matrices from the left, you obtain such a thing, meaning what matters is that by multiplying a matrix, which is a combination of maybe thousands or millions of small matrices, right? Operation after operation, you do these row operations. In the end, what matters is that you come to this. And when you have that, we proved it here. It doesn't matter which order, how you came here, right? As long as you have this, this is a proof that this E is A inverse and X is also A inverse. That's it. Yes. Where did we write E1 from? OK, how did, we, how did I think of it? We have to just think about it. I mean, just, it's just, you have to understand, this is a very simple operation. You, it's not a sophisticated thing. I, you are saying is that I want to uh, do a row operation that multiplies a row with something and subtract it from the other one. It's just, it's going to go always like this, OK? For example, let me give you another example here. How much time I left? Okay, a few more minutes. Let's say I have if I multiply E with A without naming, what will it do? OK? What will be the operation here? Will the first three rows change? Yeah. Oh, that will also do something, right? It will knock out the third equation. <laughs> OK, what will this do? So the first three rows will remain as they were. They will not change at all, isn't it? What will happen to the fourth one? First equation will be multiplied by 2 and added to the last one, isn't it? 
So fourth equation will be replaced by a new equation, which is two times the first equation added to the existing fourth equation. OK? That will be your new equation. It doesn't have to make anything zero. I mean, this is a, this, this is the operation. So by choosing these factors appropriately, we knock out some, uh, I, some components of the matrix. Right? We make them zero by choosing them smartly. We compute the ratio, and according to that ratio, we, we do our operation. Okay. Okay. Next week, I will revisit this quickly, and I will talk about LU factorization, and then we will continue in vector spaces. So first lecture will be about these things, and second and third lecture, hopefully, we will start vector spaces.